So, well, I'm going to talk about happiness, right? Um, so, uh, today I'll, I'll tell you basically that uh, we live in prehistory. Not in terms of government, not in terms of taxing, uh, but in terms of mapping. So, our maps are prehistory. And, uh, however, I'll, I'm going to show you a few things we did for research that will, me, will move things, uh, hopefully, a bit uh, forward. After I um, finished my PhD here uh, in London, I moved to Boston. I lived in uh, Boston and uh, worked in Cambridge, uh, US. And um, every day, basically, I, I was cycling because I bought this racing bike. And I cycle every day to work. And to find my way, I use my mobile phone app. And my mobile phone app is sent me over the shortest path. If you know Boston, the shortest path is going to be Mass Ave. Right? So this is a car traffic park road. Right? So my mobile phone was sending me through Mass Ave for an entire month. I was going on Mass Ave. But one day, after a month going every day on myself, I took a different road. I took a different road, and I was kind of surprised. Because I actually find uh, a new street, draped by the leaves, surrounded by trees, which was just parallel to myself. Now, this got me thinking. And um, it got me thinking that, actually, wh why I was doing that? So why I was following my mobile app? Why I was trapped in my mobile app that sent me over the shortest path? Right? So if you think about it, your mobile app actually has the power to make the handful of direction it's going to give you to destination actually the definitive directions to that destination. That's kind of powerful, right? A simple mapping app. Now, I'm sure how many of you have used uh, mapping apps before? Brilliant, most of you. So my experience, uh, I'm not alone with this experience, right? We follow our mobile apps and uh, we follow the path. But actually, there might be alternative path that might, might be much better. So that got me thinking. And uh, I changed my research from traditional data mining in um, urban computing and urban planning. Uh, work at MIT, and uh, I started to copy these guys from the 70s. Those are famous scientists, Jane Jacobs, Sally Milgram, Kevin Lynch. <coughs> and uh, the idea is that by copying that research and reframing with new web tools, uh, actually we were able to come up with a new thing. A thing that actually, instead of giving you from A to B, this is Boston, the shortest path, which is the blue one, is going to give you the most enjoyable path, the red one. Right, here the key part for research is how on earth do you define the most enjoyable path, right? Okay, so definitely Einstein, which was mentioned before, said a logic will get you from A to B, right? So imagination will get you everywhere. So we needed a bit of imagination. And what we did, I was at the University of Cambridge. Um, before, uh, when, when we were doing this experiment with colleagues, we thought about this really simple experiment. If I were to ask you which one of these urban scenes is more beautiful, which one would you say, A or B? Who says A? Don't be shy. Who says B? Brilliant. So based on that assumption, we build the game. So basically, you get to show pairs of pictures, 10 pairs. And you're asked which one is more beautiful, which one is more quiet, which one makes you happier. right? And based on basically thousands of users that were playing this game, because it takes one minute, so you share your score on Twitter, on Facebook. Based on that, as a byproduct, we could actually rank the picture by beauty, by quietness, by happiness. Now imagine these pictures are actually urban scenes, right? So they are points on a map. <coughs> and what we did with these points, well, I team up with uh, Luca Rossano uh, when I was in uh, Barcelona. And what we did is basically new maps. Instead of having the maps that will show you the shortest path, we will, have you also, we will show you also the, the map with the happy path, the quiet path, and the beautiful path. And the idea here is that 
these maps actually don't, don't show you the shortest path, but they will show you the short path that is also pleasant. We did some tests in uh, Boston and London, and actually people said, why on earth companies are not doing that, right? So why they're showing only the shortest path? I'm actually doing that if I know really well an area, but why an app cannot do that, right? And so they were really pleased by uh, the different paths, uh, and they really did uh, avoid the shortest path now. They had the ability to take uh, an alternative one. But also they said, okay, that's brilliant, I love it, but there are some things missing. And one uh, thing that was missing, which we found funny, was smell. So some people said, oh, I love the smell of coffee and croissant, so I take a road where there is this coffee shop every day in the morning, it makes me feel good, right? And we said, okay, brilliant. Um, so since we are researchers, so we are kind of crazy, um, and we are paid to be crazy. Um, so what we did is, so I, I spoke with my collaborators and I said, well, our next item is, is gonna be smell. Now you can imagine that um, they look at me and they said, you're crazy, right? They didn't say that, but uh, they actually thought about it. Um, and they know me that I'm crazy. So we, we, we actually uh, work on smell. So this is kind of uh, new work that has been um, out uh, for, for a week. Um, um, so here the idea is that think about your nose. And your nose is a sort of a big data machine. Did you know that? So everybody reads science in this room, brilliant. So an article in Science 2014 saying our nose potentially can distinguish more than one trillion different types of smell, right? One trillion is a quite um, big number. But then if you th think about city plannings and city officials, uh, for example, in London, then the city official will deal only with maybe 10, maybe hundreds of these odors. Why? Uh, because they deal with complaints. They deal only with bad odors. Whereas what we did is that, um, so why is that? Why is it difficult to actually deal with the rest of the one trillion minus 100 smells? Well, the problem is that the smell is really difficult to capture. So there are some people in the US and China for policing reasons that go around like this uh, with this nasal ranger. But of course, that's not scalable, right? And I cannot say to this audience this scalable way, right? So what we did is that um, we actually team up with, um, with Kate. Uh, Kate is a PhD student at the Royal College of Art, and she does smell walking. So she basically, she goes around the world in different cities, she takes people, and she let them smell stuff, right? So you smell the rubbish and you say, oh, I can smell oranges. Yes, because there are pills of oranges inside. So basically, she, she takes the keywords, and for three years, she's been collecting keywords related to smell. So we had 258 words related to smell in English. And what we did was match these words with this social media data, right? And now maybe you can see where I'm going here. So you match the smell-related words with social media data, and what do you do? You can, for example, see which words co occur together. I take a picture, and there is maybe violet and rose, right, all together, because I take a picture of that and annotate with the words. So you can actually look at the community structures, and you can see that actually you have tons of thousands of smells, smells about animals, nature, Traffic emissions, of course. And are we crazy? So you might be thinking, well, social media data, does it work? It actually works. If you look at the correlation between air quality indicators provided by the London authorities at street level, seg a street segment level, and you look at the correlation between air quality indicators and uh, smell clusters, you can, you can actually see that uh, where there is air pollution, there is a high presence of tags related to the cluster of traffic emission. Where there is no air pollution, actually there are lots of tags related to nature. So this actually has validity and social media data can be used actually to explore not only negative smell, but also positive ones. Of course, uh, the happy path uh, is about walkability, but also this kind of smell path is beautiful. We like to celebrate the positive smell, but also it's got important health implications. How many of you 
go running. A lot, right? Well, if you're running on, in London in an air-polluted street, then you're doing more harm than good. Why? Because your blood goes up, and your ability to actually absorb air pollutant is far <coughs> higher than if you were to just walk. Right? So that's why we're building also an app where, for runners where we, we can actually not only take the happy path, but you can actually minimize the exposure to air pollutant. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.